Hello, everybody. Look at what I decided to uh, to drag out from the depths of the YouTube. Well, kind of. Uh, it is the Football Coach College Dynasty game that we uh, explored on YouTube uh, at least probably, I think, a couple months ago or so. Uh, surprisingly, still one of my more popular videos on a consistent basis, even today, which is absolutely insane. Uh, so... I decided to bring it back, but not quite the way it was before. Uh, that save was uh, deleted a while ago. So we are doing a different save uh, where we are man where we are currently the head coach of for those who uh, follow along with the other college football series, you'll get the kind of a little bit of a joke here. We're the head coach of the Florida Atlantic Owls. <laughs> This is, in this universe, we have also taken on Florida Atlantic. But this time we're the head coach, not just the offense coordinator. Um, I figured, you know, it was a, because I wanted to make sure I had to two, uh, do uh, a level two recruit or a level two school that I was uh, head coaching at first. Because this is the coach dynasty part. This is the part where it's, you know, 50, 50 years as the head coach, uh, you know, and go from there. It's not like a dynasty thing, so I can move schools from one to another. Uh and so I was like, well, you know, it'd be really ironic if I just started with FAU. So there you go. Uh, we've done a couple weeks of the preseason on this right now because I didn't want to do a whole episode where we were going through all four weeks of the preseason. But uh, I saved the last week of preseason here so that we guys can kind of see what we're doing. Uh, for those who watched that video before, um, you'll kind of know a little bit about the game. Or if you've played this game, you'll kind of know about, a little bit about the game. Uh, it is on Steam right now. I believe it's still technically... Uh, in early access, I think it's still, uh, they're still kind of releasing updates here and there and trying to fine tweak everything before they release the game as an actual full game. Uh, but you know, I've been kind of still playing it off and on. So I decided to, uh, to actually do a series. Um, this will be happening on the same day as the other college football series. So you will get a college football game where you can actually see what's going on. Uh, and then you'll get a college football game where you get to see a bunch of numbers and stuff, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> so, you know, one, one uh, version for each person out there. But, uh, yeah, um, preseason summer two, uh, summer week two here. Uh, the head coach of the Florida Atlantic Owls, uh, which we can look at ourselves here real quick. We are the off we are level 10 offensive motivator, which means we can... Uh, we're motivating for our team. Um, start off at age 30. You just automatically do when you start off this thing. I put our hometown of Iowa City, Iowa. That's not where I'm actually located, but seeing as how uh, Daredevil is a in the game world, he's a Iowa Hawkeyes uh, graduate. Of course, we're going to put the hometown of Iowa City, Iowa. Um, I'm kind of near there but not quite near there but i'm still in the state of iowa so hawkeyes fan through and through but uh you'll see we're starting off you know as the head coach uh we have a contract where we are making 2.4 million dollars a year uh three-year contract that we signed uh with a one million dollar bonus apparently well kind of we'll get into that in a second um attributes so we have four offense and four in training. So we, uh, we're kind of, you know, offensive motivator. We're, we're someone who's good at, uh, at doing training stuff, essentially. Uh, and then we have our coaching staff here. We have Danny Nix, who is an offensive recruiter. Uh, so he's do, he's good on the recruitment side of the offense, however. And then we have uh, Kaysen Moon, who is a defensive genius. So he is good on the uh, defensive side. I don't remember which role the genius one is exactly, but... He was one of the better ones that we had, so. Uh, weak dashboard. We will take a look at everything really quick. Um, kind of uh, show you how things are here. So we're going to be running a pro-style balanced offense, uh, which it has a level four uh, of offense there. And then, uh, or sorry, uh, we're running, yeah, we're running the pro-style balanced, um, but it's level seven play call level. Uh, and then on defense, it, it we're going to be running the nickel conserve zone only because Case and Moon is really good at it. Uh, since we're an offensive minded head coach, I didn't really, 
I just went with whatever our defense coordinator had for defensing. So we're going to be running a nickel conservative zone. We'll see how well that works out for us. Uh, Roster-wise, as you see there, uh, we have a really good defense and really good receivers. And that's kind of about it. <laughs> We have, we have a good kick and punt return. Um, we have four wide receivers, as you can see here, that are all 79 or higher, uh, which is insane. Uh, we also have a defensive lineman that is 82 overall. We have a linebacker that is 82 overall. We have a cornerback that is 78 overall and a safety that is 78 overall. Now, you may be wondering yourself, Daredevil, uh, what is the worst stat on this team right now? Well, other than punting, our worst stat is quarterback play because we have a quarterback. We have quarterbacks. That are 70 overall as our as our uh, starter and our backup. So that'll be interesting. Not only that, but the best, the one with the most potential out of all of them is currently 62 overall. So not great, but, uh, you know, it, we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Um, it's kind of our depth chart right there. Like I said, we've got... 282 wide receivers, an 80, a 79, a 77, and a 74. So that's going to be insane. Um, it'll definitely be absolutely crazy for that. And then, you know, defense, we've got pretty good defense too. So definitely looks better than our uh, NCAA fo uh, football 13 team for sure. <laughs> that is that is for sure. Um, I don't know if I can do anything out of this yet we're still in the preseason okay so there's not much to there anyway let's get into the week stuff here so uh recruitment wise we have 22 actions remaining we won't be doing all 22 actions uh so we have three running backs that we need two wide receivers six offensive linemen because yeah most of those big name or most of those really great offensive linemen are all like seniors and they're gonna be leaving us uh, one defensive tackle, one linebacker, and one safety. We, you see we do have a few extras there um, in that targets by possession section. We do have a few extra in some of those because there were some ones that were pretty good there. So right now we're targeting 21 people. Uh, we'll see if we get all 21. But uh, we're going to go ahead and sort this by overall. So right now we got a uh, Javon Mayfield here who's a wide receiver who is three stars, uh, He's considered a gem. He's considered to be underrated by the recruiting experts. He's 74 overall B minus potential right now. So he has potential, you know, potential to be pretty good for us. Uh, and he's in high school. So that means he'd be coming in as a freshman, which would be good. He has insane speed, really good evasion. And, uh, you know, 71 catching is not bad either. So he's kind of our top guy there. Uh, Simon Pugh, also 74 overall, but he is actually climbed a little bit he was at like a 75 or 76 before we started scouting him so he's been kind of falling a little bit which is not a great thing but he is like 86 catching and 88 routes running route running so he's not gonna be super fast but he's gonna be able to he's gonna be able to catch that ball and do well with it so uh we're going to go ahead and keep and uh do another scout thing for him though so we can keep uh going because i want to see okay so he does have 53 ball security so you know, he'll be kind of, he can catch the ball really well and he can run those routes really well. It'll be kind of iffy as to whether he holds on to the balls that well, but we'll see what happens with him. Uh, we got Will Pearson here, who's a safety, 69 overall as of right now. Uh, did go down a little bit. Uh, he has 82 zone coverage, so that's pretty good for his safety. We'll do head, we'll go ahead and do a scout for him real quick. Uh, that didn't help. I dropped him down to a 68 overall. Not good. He does have A minus durability, so that's a good thing, but that's not good. Not good to see. Uh you know, wide receiver's still up here at the top here. Let's go ahead and do a scout for him really quick. I dropped him to 68 overall too. That's not good. We're starting to drop him right now. That's not a good sign. We got Eddie Whitley here, who's a 69 right now, the 69 overall safety. Uh I mean, unless his speed and strength end up lower than those grades, he probably shouldn't be dropping too much because his ball skills aren't going to affect his overall, I would imagine. I would not imagine, that is. So he's not the greatest on the defense, but he's coming in, you know, he was coming in as a junior, which isn't great either, but he still could be pretty, you know, at least decent. Uh, that scout actually got him back up to a 70, so that's good to see. 
He does have 83 speed, so that's really cool. Uh, turned out to be better speed than what they uh, predicted, so that's good. Um, we also got this safety here, who's 68 overall. He dropped a point in overall over, but he does have B-plus potential, so that's good to see. He could get better really quickly. Um, Cole Demons. Yeah, you'll see it's basically just wide receivers and safeties at the start right now. Uh, a lot of our other uh, needs are, like, way down here when it comes to overalls. Not a great sign. Um, let's look at, I keep hoping that, uh, this guy is going to be better than he is, but it doesn't look like it. Unless his run blocking ends up being amazing, his overall is probably just not going to be that good. Especially compared to a couple of these other running backs that are still here. Um, so we'll have to kind of see what happens there, I guess. Um, let's see, let's scout him again. Okay, so we, he went up one more overall. Not bad. Let's look at some of these other guys we got all the way down here. We got somebody with A-plus potential down here as an offensive lineman. Right now he's a 61 overall, has potential to be better. Didn't uh, do it with that click of the scouting, though. Run block is 57, pass block is 72, so not terrible. does have A durability, which is pretty decent. Uh, but he's probably not going to get too much better overall-wise, because everything else that hasn't been scouted yet is not not exactly going to affect a offensive lineman overall. Unless it turns out that these numbers are slightly wrong or something. Uh, we'll do scouts for Judah Linton down here, too. Woof. That just dropped him down to a 59, where he was before. That's not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. Um, this guy, this 59 overall with B-plus potential is pretty good. But I kind of want him to be better, I'm hoping. That didn't do much of anything for him. Uh, cause I'm kind of trying to focus the scouts a little bit more on this, on the ones with higher potential, but I might have to, uh, just kind of do what I can with it. Uh, cause I mean, I, at this point I'm kind of locked in with the people, with the, uh, the people who we're aiming at right now. I don't really have anybody else who I'm like, you know, uh, looking at the recruits out there, I don't really have anybody else who I'm like, ah, I gotta go get this guy. Cause like a lot of them are, were either way too far out of range of or they're ones that are just not good at all um so we just have to kind of keep hoping that uh that some of these guys end up turning out to be better than they are or at least better than they're currently showing um let's get Hobbs completely scouted out here so he's a 64 overall it's not bad something i can work with um, let's do one more scout for this Layton Watson guy. Okay, so that didn't really change that, which we kind of already knew. So we got all our scouting done. Now we can do targeting. We can uh, change what our recruitment action is for the week. Uh, the way I've been doing this is basically just sorting by overall, and then just focusing on my biggest ones. Now, now that I'm three weeks into it, you're kind of seeing like some of these ones I have a bigger lead on than others. So I probably should be focusing on some of like the better ones. Like for example, I have three offensive coordinator pitches that are ace level. So I should probably start focusing those on guys who aren't, who we're not in the lead with right now. Cause like, for example, Javon Mayfield, like we already have like a 529 point lead over uh, the second school. Uh, so as long as we keep doing well with it, we probably don't need to do the ace pitch with him. Like for him, I could probably just do like a good head coach pitch. Pew is only 171 up. So I should probably keep, I probably should do an ace one for him just to bring him in or try to keep, make sure I can bring him in. Andy Whitley here. Uh, C minus potential is not great, but he is the 13th overall. Safety, according to that. 
Let's go do the great one for him. Even though we have... Well, no, we have a big enough lead on him. Let's just... Keep him as targeted. Because there's nothing between this week and the next week that would cause that 854 to completely disappear. So let's just keep him as targeted. You see that some of them we can schedule visits for. I don't know for sure when I want to schedule these visits. These are the only six home games we have this season. And I don't know what some of those games are going to look like. Because in this, like, recruit, you know, visits have a really good impact on what, you know, whether somebody will go with you or not. So I don't know what this Rice game is going to look like versus, like, Week 9, the Texas game, you know, stuff like that. So I'm kind of holding out a little bit here. Um, so let's see, Pearson here, we're 64 off the lead. So let's do an okay pitch for him here. Because Dante Boyd is a 68 as well, and he's got B-plus potential, so I want to focus the great pitch on him. Uh, we're 233 off for this one, so let's do a, do I want to do an A spoon for him? He has C minus overall, or C minus potential, I mean. I probably have other people who I want to do a higher pitch for, like this guy, like Omar Hobbs here. He's got A minus potential. He's one I should definitely do one of the ace ones on. And Lane Watson, I should probably try to do an ace one on as well. Because we're kind of, you know, we're minus 347 on him right now. And USF is going hard for him. So we should definitely be trying to keep up with them. All right, so we got that. Um, we still have five head coaching pitches, and we have one defensive coaching pitch or defensive coordinator pitch that is defensive coordinator uh bobby kennedy maybe um max olsen we're not too far off of he has b plus potential but he is 59 overall as of right now we still have a few things we can unlock with him though scouting wise so let's use the okay pitch on him and then let's just go back and anybody who we're not in the lead with by a significant amount, we'll do the head coaching one with. So that one. Uh, Dylan Abbott should be fine. That should be fine. The Cromwell iffy, but it should be okay. Haynes, that's still a little too close for my comfort, so let's do a head coach pitch there. That one's fine. Gong. It's only 136 up. Let's do a head coach pitch there. Kennedy will do the head coach pitch with. I've got one more that we can do. Morgan Peterson we may have a problem with because we're still 533 back. USF decided to start running away with that one. Same with Raymond Sullivan, who, you know, we just are really far back on. So that might be a problem for us as well. Which, to be fair, if I scheduled these visits, I probably would have a better chance of getting them as well. But uh, let's get Judah Linton here. Everybody else can be just a target. It. We'll go there. Anyway. All right, so there's that. Uh, we've used up all of our, our, uh, our coaching things here. So... Next, we can do training. Um, as you'll see, we've kind of already done some training here. Um, you do kind of have a penalty, not a penalty, but you have a less chance of a breakthrough if you train somebody twice in the same preseason. So I'm trying to avoid that as best as possible. Uh, you'll see some of these people, you know, plus one or whatever. So uh, Proctor had a plus four in quarterback IQ, which was good, which got him up to 70 overall. Uh, Axel Daly you know, fourth string quarterback, got a plus six in quarterback IQ, which was really good. Running back, so far we just had plus ones. I'm not going to bother scouting Harper, or bother training Harper, because he's got F plus potential. He's not going to be that good for us. Uh, Noel Lester managed to get himself plus nine run blocking, which shot him up to an 82. I think he was an 81, and then he got shot up to an 82 because of that. 
So that was really exciting. Uh, we'll go do training for Tyson Boyer here, though. I'm trying to focus on, like, the six pop that are popped up right here and doing whatever one is the weak one. So as you see here, that 53 run block is his weakest one. So we'll do that. Um, with this game, as you see, when we go to training, especially in preseason, each one has to do with, like, a certain uh, coach. And you only have three of each. So, like, we can only do three head coach ones, three offensive coordinator, three def defensive coordinator ones. So we want to do run blocking for Boyer. Eh, he only got plus one, but that's fine. I did get him up one there. Um, I'm trying to not to waste my training on anybody who has an at least like a B minus potential. Uh, the exception was Hammond here, or one of the exceptions was Hammond here because I was trying to get him a little bit better. Um, let's go with Tyson here. His lowest is speed, so that's going to be a head coaching one. So let's see if we can have a breakthrough for him. Nope, just still plus one. That kind of sucks, but that's all right. Um, offensive lineman. Brett Lawrence hasn't done anything yet. He's B minus. His worst is speed as well on that, so nope, just plus one on that. That sucks. We did have uh, Caleb Donnelly here uh, get plus 12 for speed, which was crazy jump. But to be fair, he's now at a 42, which means you can do the math. He was at a 30 before I did that, which is crazy uh, low speed. Uh, I'm not going to worry about anybody too far down there right now. I might circle back. Our kickers are not great. Um, in this game, you have three kickers. Or not three, you don't have three kickers. You don't have technically a punters. You have, you know, they're all just under the category of kickers. So, you know, we have not uh, the best when it comes to kickers and punters. Um, Irvin Ellis is our starter. He's got really good kick and, puck and punt accuracy. Uh, not great punt power, though. He also didn't have really great kick power, but thankfully he did have breakthrough that got him plus six on that. Uh, and then I tried to do Richardson to see if he would have a breakthrough, which he did, but it wasn't too much. Um, defensive tackle. Should be everybody there that I want to go with. Linebackers, I haven't done anything with other than Ivor down here. So we could try to do some linebacker ones here. Let's see. Uh, strength is his lowest one, which is the last head coaching one we'll be doing. Hey, got plus five for it. Nice. Got it up there. Um, Fulton man coverage is his lowest, which is defensive, so that's good. Do that. That only got plus one, though. Kind of sucks. Uh, Moreland man coverage is his lowest. Hey, got plus five for that. Nice. There you go. Good way to bump him up there. Cornerbacks. Let's do something with Campbell here. His lowest is pursuit. Yeah. That'll be our last head coach one, or defensive coordinator one. And only got plus one. That's fine. All right, so now we have two more offensive coordinator stuff we can do. Um, so let's see if there is somebody else here. I might go with a couple of these lower tier wide receivers. So I don't know if I have anybody else. I don't really want to... Wasted on 58 overall Jack Hicks there. I guess I could go some of the lower tier uh, offensive linemen as well. I can't do speed for this guy. Uh, so we will have to do pass block. I only got plus one. Dang it. Uh, let's look back at the wide receivers. Let's go with some with uh, Tyree West here. Let's see. Strength is the lowest, which we're not doing. So route or run, run block. Let's go route. Let's see if we can get something here. Plus six. Nice. Nice jump. Or nice uh, training there. All right. Uh, we could do the practices, but I doing the practices before, I wasn't really a fan of them. So I don't really care about the practices that much. So we'll go save and advance on. Um, yes, we're going to advance. 
you've kind of seen what we're looking at recruitment wise so far and all that um as you can tell the games in this are uh or the the way that these episodes will be is probably gonna be a little bit faster than uh you know week wise it's gonna be a little bit quicker than the other ones because the other one has to play out the whole thing whereas this the games can go a little bit faster than that so we'll see uh so we have an our athletic director is damon damian wallace who's hot-headed which is not good he's going to take disappointment more strongly but we're only expected to win two games so as long as we win two games our expectations are met uh we have silver donors here um Caden alex who's given us 5.5 million dollars uh, but he's given us a bonus where if we get three plus games won, then we get an extra $938,000, which is good. And we got Diego Chavez here, who gave us 5.5 mil. And he gave us a bonus of $3.75 million if we can win at least four conference games, which is, you know, as you see, it says difficulty hard. That one might be a little more difficult, but we should be able to get at least two and possibly even get Caden Alex's to get that three plus. We should be able to get that as well. I'm not too worried about that. Um, I don't know why I clicked on that, because there wouldn't be anybody. Good lord. There is somebody that's 102 overall. <laughs> that's, there's somebody that's 104 overall. What the hell? That's insane. Well, good to see, uh, some of the people there. Uh, for those out there, who, by the way, I probably should have brought this up. Um, for those out there who want to get this game themselves, uh, definitely get it i definitely would suggest doing it uh this is, game is a lot of fun um but one thing you're gonna have to do uh well i mean you don't have to but one thing you should do is this game is similar to tw in the sense that there is a default universe that is all created um now with this game the default universe is pretty similar to real life uh if i remember right the default universe has like the Iowa, like it's still technically like the University of Iowa, but it's like something that's very similar to Hawkeyes, that kind of thing. Um, like the, it's one of those things that when you go to look at the teams, it's pretty obvious what they are. Um, I'm trying to, I can't remember all of the, the different ones right offhand because I haven't done too much with it, but it's definitely, it's one of those that it's like, you know, um, I think like USC might be like the Warriors or something like that. Like it's it's something where it's like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense that you know that those are basically that. Um, but uh so you would have to go download uh a mod if you want the actual like more ad like not player wise, but the the team names and, and all that stuff you would have to go download a mod for. Uh you can find it pretty easily. I don't remember where I got this one, but it's pretty easy to find online. So this is uh this is what you were looking at at the start of the you know for each week of the regular season you have this little summary here all this stuff so we see you starting off week one here we're not gonna actually play a game in here but we'll show you all this stuff before we dive into uh you know before we end this episode here so we've got uh you know we're the conference USA here um, 74 offensive talent which is good for 125th in the nation. And 76 defensive talent, which is good for 120th, so not great. Uh, division rival is FIU, uh, school level of 26, and prestige of two stars. Our first game this week will be taking on Central Michigan in a Conference USA versus Mid-American out-of-conference game. Uh, and then next week we'll actually be having a conference game as we take on Western Kentucky at, at Western Kentucky. Our first home game of the season is until week three when we take on Rice. Um... Oh, can I click on that right now? I can. And they are going to be a little bit better. They are going to be a little bit better. Um, so we may have to... Uh, we may have to consider that. I mean, that's going to be the first game I can do... Um, a, uh, visits for, so maybe we'll do that. But we'll see. Uh, week checklist, we'll have like our recruiting... Our practice focus, our depth chart, and our game plan, which we'll go over in the next episode. But I'm just kind of showing stuff here. So division standings in our division in Conference USA here. We're in the same uh, same. We're in the East Conference, East Division that is, with Louisiana Tech, UAB, Charlotte, Middle Tennessee, and FIU. 
And on the west, it's Western Kentucky, Rice, UTSA, North Texas, UTEP, and New Mexico State. So we'll have to see how that ends up working out for us. Um, otherwise, yeah, we haven't made any promises yet, but uh, that's kind of where we're at right now. So we'll kind of, uh, you know, right now, USC is ranked number one, followed by Michigan, Clemson, Texas, and Notre Dame to round out the top five of the preseason, so to speak. I guess this only shows top 10s then. Alabama, Georgia, Oklahoma State, Florida, and Louisiana, and LSU there. And they got the player of the year watch on their game of the, games of the week to watch out for. And uh, going from there. So that is going to do it for this episode. Uh, the next episode we do for this, we will dive into week one and see if we can beat Central Michigan. We'll have to see. But thank you all for watching. Definitely appreciate it. And we'll catch you in a future episode.